restricted the uh, um, uh, the tail rudders. They couldn't they couldn't move. They couldn't control the vehicle. Now he's jumping from much much higher. Uh, the air density is much much lower, and therefore it should be easier for him to do certain things. Seven. Move pilot monitor to the exit position. Valve and zip pocket shut. Have you ever built that? He's a serious man, particularly about this. I mean, we think he's a we think of him as a daredevil, don't we, an adventurer? In the way that past vehicles have not. If you remember Shuttle when it first launched back in the 80s, it actually had a difference. I understand you're now talking about the City World News. We're bringing you live coverage as the Austrian skydiver Felix Baumgartner has plans to jump out <laughs> of the pod to 10,000 feet. It started its ascent two and a half hours out. There is a near absence of air at that altitude. It means it sh he should break the sound barrier as he falls. That's 690. And back again, forwards. And you can unbuckle yourself. And he can pull himself out on it. Mama's yeah. open! Good! That's good. Meer dan duizend kilometer. Ik heb een 
didn't he? Very interesting also that uh, just as the camera cut away to look at mission control, just before that, his body was tumbling quite a bit. Um, it looks as though either he failed to get into this delta position, head down, uh, arms back, which he's got now. Either he failed to get into that position as he went through the sound barrier, or maybe um, a little bit later he got some sort of disturbance and was knocked out of that position. Um, but as we saw, he regrouped. Um, and he got into this this perfect form uh, to make the rest of the journey. And you know we're what three three twenty now in terms of free fall. He's got another minute just falling to earth. Because it is another minute, exactly a minute. We're being told until the parachute opens. Yeah. Because then it will be what four and a half minutes of free fall. Yeah. yeah. And the noise that was interesting, wasn't it? Because there was that minute of silence. And yeah, if you've watched yeah. any kind of science yeah, cool. that involves people chasing nasty things across other planets, there's that breathing inside the headset that you hear that. And no matter how much training you've done, no matter how much prep you've done, the adrenaline kicks at the top of your lungs. And he's thinking, oh my, I've done it. You, you could hear him breathing faster, yeah. uh, couldn't you? Abs absolutely. It was wonderful just to hear his voice. I think everybody sort of kind of held their breath when they saw him. Sí, uh, I was certainly worried when I saw him. Well, okay, he's, you know, the idea. We've just had the parachute deployed. Look at that, Peter. Let's listen to what we should control. But he looks good, look, his arms are, are up, he's got that, uh, that shooting in, in perfect. All of the data that will underpin any claim that he makes to the International Aeronautic Federation. Um, it's been recorded on a little micro card. Um, that representative will, will take that card, take it back to the computer, run it through the computer, work out the actual numbers. Um, but I think we know, Peter, certainly that he's broken the altitude record. Um, it's a question of just how fast he got, I think, to understand right. whether or not he broke the speed of sound. Part of that is understanding also where the speed of sound is in the atmosphere, because it's a different speed up there than it is down here. Um, if you remember, um, uh, the land speed record for a car uh, was up at about, what, 763 miles an hour, I think. Um, up there... It's about 700 miles a minute, so that has to do with the temperature and the air density and, and all the rest of it. But the, the, the FAI, which is the international body that oversees this sort of stuff, uh, they will determine whether or not the records have been broken and until, and they say so, until they endorse it, these are just unofficial marks. But he must be mighty pleased. So. I'm not sure whether it's the respect to the camera shots in that helicopter that's following him, or one more than one or two helicopters. But it certainly looks to me as if we're taking this a bit longer than that. He's guiding you into a launch pad. That's that's what it looks like. He he, he was told to look out for the town of Roswell um, when he got into a certain situation and to bring himself as near back to where he started uh, as possible. I'm not sure of the actual distance from Roswell Airport, but it'll probably be on the order of a, a few tens of kilometers, tens of miles, something like that. But it's very close. We're going to have touchdown just now. He's got a big smile on that face behind that glass. Isn't that? And then you can see by the approaching shadow. Hey, he's got to go. 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 Now, for the highest jump by far. 
earth, your saliva would boil, the water in your eyes would boil, your tissues would swell. Um, you need a pressure suit above that level. So, and the integrity on that suit had to be maintained, um, you know, for half of the distance at which he fell. Otherwise, he would have been in severe problems. Not enough oxygen to breathe up there. Simply not enough. I suppose was what would happen to him uh, um, as he went through the sound barrier. Would there be a oh, of of to, to knock him into a spin? You know, if it started to spin, to rotate very, very rapidly, um, you see yeah. sometimes in jet fighters when they turn the corner very, very sharp.